So I bought a three year customer service plan and got a free welder with it. What's up Happy Fabricators? In this video, we're gonna be doing a one year review on the Prime Weld ACDC TIG 225. Now, is this the best TIG welder out there? No. Is this the best TIG welder out there for under a thousand dollar price point? I believe so. In this video, we're gonna go over the pros of this machine, the cons of this machine, and we're gonna show you the upgrades that Prime Weld has made over the last two years. So thanks for watching AM Custom Fab. Make sure to like, hit that subscribe button, and let's get diving into this machine. So I wanna start off by saying this video is not sponsored by Prime Weld. These are just my own unbiased thoughts and opinions on this machine and my experiences on how it's performed in the two, the almost two years I've had it. So now I've called this a one year review and I purchased the machine in June of 2020 and is currently March of 2022. So I've almost had it for two years, but I'm calling it a one year, but I'll get into the details a little later in the video on why I'm calling it a one year review. Okay, so we'll start off with the good stuff. There were a couple primary things that made this machine very appealing to me in the beginning. Number one was the price. Like I said before, this machine comes in at well under a thousand dollars and with the features and the name brand hardware that it comes with, I felt like that was really hard to beat. The number two thing is the customer service. If you look at the forum, you look at the Facebook pages. The customer service for this company is just second to none. So I knew that even if something happened to this, I was gonna be taken care of in the end. So just a quick rundown on the features of this machine if you don't know already. This is a dual voltage machine. So that means you can run on 110 or 220. And so you can get up to 120, I believe, amps off of 110 outlet and then 225 amps off of a 220 outlet, which makes it very versatile very portable, you can take it to places that potentially do not have 220 power, which I have done a lot and been able to do a lot of jobs because of that. This is an AC-DC machine, so you can run aluminum or mild steel stainless, so you can work both sides of that waveform. It has some pulse features with it, so if you wanna dabble in pulse, you can pulse up to 200 pulses per second. It's got a T2 and T4 function, so you can run your pedal or you can run off a finger switch. It's got a post flow setting, which some machines don't have and you can stick weld with it on top of that. Now I've ran this thing hard. I've never hit the duty cycle on it, running it straight. I have burnt up the factory CK torch and that is not Primal's fault and that's not CK's fault. This is an air-cooled machine. Now they have upgrades available to turn this into a water-cooled machine, but technically the CK number 17 torch that it comes with is only rated for a consistent 175 amps. And I was welding some quarter-inch aluminum on some intercoolers for an extended period of time, and I burnt this torch up. Machine trucked on through doing all that quarter-inch aluminum. This thing has an incredibly stable arc especially on the DC side. I believe it is a 10 amp start on the DC side. Super crisp, super stable. I know there's several guys out there that run professional shops and they only are running off of this machine. Okay, so regarding durability of this machine, this thing has been pretty solid. It's got metal panels on the outside, hard plastic corners. With me throwing it in and out of my vehicles, taking it to jobs and stuff like that, I have broke one little plastic piece right up here in the corner, but Besides that, it's held together really well. As far as user experience with the machine, it does most things very well. There are a couple things, we'll talk about those in the cons, that it doesn't do as well. But for 95% of what most people are gonna be doing, this machine will get the job done. So my overall experience with customer service. Now I'm gonna be truthful and upfront with you guys. I did have this machine take a dump on me. Now it was probably my fault. We were at a buddy's house. We were running off 110, working on some 16 gauge stainless turbo manifolds. And then something was going on with his outlets. Worked fine one day with no problems. The next weekend we were there, we were having all kinds of problems. I think that his shop is wired bad or something because plugged into the 220 and it blew the upper board, which is this guy right here. Now this plays into the customer service of Prime Weld. I called the guys up at Prime Weld and they gave me two options. They said they'd send me another board or they'd get another machine on the way. And they had me up and running within seven business days. Stuff like this can happen to any machine. Just for an example, actually last year at my job, we bought a $10,000 name brand machine. 
and within eight months, the high frequency went out on it. Now we called them up and asked them to fix it. Now, this is a $10,000 machine, not an under $1,000 machine. And they had us package it up, ship it to their service center, and we did not see that machine for over three months. So even name brands are gonna have their lemons. The important thing to me is how fast you're up and running again. And Primewell definitely has their hands on their customer service. It seems like their number one priority is to take care of their people. So I really appreciate that. I got the new board back in there and this thing welds beautifully again, flawlessly, hasn't skipped a beat. Actually, this thing has spent the last month at my place of work as a primary welder and one of the booths because another name brand welder that we own took a dump and I brought this into work and stuck it in the booth and it got used in an industrial setting for over a month. This thing has had lots of use on it, been abused and is still performing great even after went through and replaced that board. So let's jump into the cons of this machine. There's not a lot of them, but we wanna talk about them. First one is this machine is a little bit larger than machines that share its similar spec, but also those machines that have that smaller package come with a price tag that is two or three times the price of this. The other downside to this machine, and I feel like it's the biggest one for me, is it's is the AC startup amperage. This machine comes in at about 20 amps of startup amperage, and it's just a little hot if you're doing real thin gauge stuff. There's workarounds with it. You can strike up on your filler metal until that startup amperage levels out, but it does come in pretty hot and heavy on the AC side. Now, I'm talking about real thin sheet metal. So basically, if you're welding 16th inch or 16 gauge, you're gonna be fine, but anything less than that, you're gonna have to do some little techniques so that you don't burn it out on just the startup. Once that art gets started, and you're rolling into the pedal a little bit, the arc levels out and it welds beautifully. The other thing that I've noticed is it has a little bit of hard time finding its ground on the AC side. If you stick your ground clamp closer to your project, it definitely helps, but it's just not as definitive as some of the name brand machines that I've used that I can have the ground on the other end of a 20 foot table and going through a menagerie of things and it finds its ground right away. For some reason, you gotta to commit to that pedal a little bit for it to find its ground and strike up, and then you're working good. Now that is only on the AC side. On the DC side, for some reason, it does not do that. I'm not sure why, but it's just the fact that's what it is. But it's not been a problem for me. Very seldom am I ever welding any aluminum that is thinner than 16 gauge. Like I said, on the DC side, doesn't have a problem. I've welded down to like, 30 thou material on stainless and mild steel, and it works great. It runs great through the pulse features. Those work great. That's the other thing I will actually really like about this machine is all the knobs are on the front. That's the downside to having a smaller package actually is because most of those machines revert to a combination knob and you have to go through sub menus to be able to find specialty settings. Whereas this, you get what you see and Honestly, that really appeals to me. I'm a physical knob kind of guy, I like it. I like to be able to flip a switch when I want to turn on the pulse feature and use it real quick and not have to go down through multiple sub menus to find those options. Okay, so now that we've gone over the cons of this machine, let's talk a little bit about the changes that Primeworld has made over the last two years. This is the Gen 1 machine and we actually have a Gen 2 machine sitting here. That's why I'm calling this a one year review because I've probably only had a solid year on this machine. Since then I've purchased another TIG 225 which we'll look at in a second over here that I run my water cooler on and I have that machine set up on a cart and that one stays in the shop so that I can do heavier duty stuff with the water cooler and the water cooled system. And then this guy is now kind of my mobile machine and runs around, I throw it in the back of the vehicle and stuff. So it actually kind of gets beat up a little more and my other TIG 225 down there sits on the cart. So let's take a quick look at the changes that Primeworld has made in the last two years. Okay, so the first change that Primeworld has made not a huge one, but I believe it's a good one, is the way that they've labeled their pulse switch. Now, the first gen here, we've just got a straight line. We go to the top for our slow pulse, up to 10 pulses per second, and then the center for our high range pulse, up to 200 pulses per second. And the current switch configuration just shows a uh, wavelength. Now we can come down over here and look at our Gen 2 machine. And the new configuration shows a high low. So 
it's just a little easier to understand low pulse, high pulse, off and straight current. Not really a change in the machine, just more of a way in which they labeled things. Now the second change they made with this machine is the size of the power cord. Now you can look at this guy in my hand here and if we look at the specs on this guy, we'll get up a little closer here and as you can see, this is a three strand 12 gauge wire that they're running on the first gen. Now if we scroll over here and take a look at the back of our second gen machine, just with this sitting in my hand, you can see the physical size of the cord is just much more robust. It's got better insulation on it. And if we get you guys close in here on it, you can see that they have upped it to a 10 gauge cable. So that's awesome to have that heavier gauge cable. Any of the newer machines coming out, are going to have that feature. And then the third and final change from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2 machine is the back power port. So if you look on the back here, we do not have any auxiliary power ports on the back of the machine. And so if you wanted to get a water cooler to add to it, you would have to plug that in separately. You can still do that. You can still run a water cooler with a Gen 1 machine, plug it in separately. But now the Gen 2 machines, we will show you here an integrated outlet for our water cooler. So on this machine, I'm running the Max Cool 3000 Prime Molds water cooler, and it has been amazing. It's almost like it opens the machine up, feel like it's easier for it to weld thicker stuff, which it is, it's not getting hot, and it's able to perform better because you're not overheating your welder. So that's kind of in a nutshell, my experience with the Prime Weld 225, having them in my shop for almost two years now between these two separate machines here. Yes, those other welders could potentially perform better, but in small incremental ways. This machine is going to do 95% of anything that you need to do. And if anything happens to it, you know that Prime Weld's got your back. That's just my opinion. I'm a firm believer in starting small and growing your skills and portfolio and not sitting around waiting to buy the best. Does that mean I will never buy a better machine? Probably not. Hopefully someday I will have quote unquote better machines, but that might also come in the form of Prime Weld because Prime Weld is innovating and designing things as we speak as well. And I know they have plans coming out with higher end machines as well. So I'm excited to see what they do in the coming years because I've been really pleased with what I have so far. So hopefully this video was helpful, provided valuable information to further your choice on whether one of these machines is the right choice for you. So once again, if you wanna see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are gonna pop up here. If you wanna be notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. It's free to do so and go build something guys.